Well, hello, everybody. So the special needs guy behind me said that uh, I should make a video about this. So here we are. So uh, I'm just going to give you a quick uh, kind of like, you know, the very basics of uh, different parts of the, the generator and the engine. And uh, the, my help, special need handy helper will uh, chime in if he feels necessary, which he's scared about because he doesn't like, you know, talking in vi uh, videos. So this is a, obviously an industrial generator puts out three megawatts um, which is enough to feed probably at least 300 homes and I'm talking with if each home had all our lights on all our whatnots anyway so in the front of us obviously we have the radiator we have the radiator cooling fan on generators they always push out it push the fan pushes through the radiator out because they're trying to cool the engine and alternator at the same time um, we got the fan pulleys. You can hardly see because it's so dark in here. Um, got the fuel filters. Now this being a diesel engine, it's gonna have an injector pump. And it looks kind of weird, but this is basically all it is. It drives fuel pressure up to about 15,000 PSI or so, um, to, up to the injectors that are inside the heads. So you got the, obviously, you got all the cylinders. And each one of these, uh, this is the valve cover and each valve cover covers one cylinder. So this is one side of the engine. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's a V20 because there's a whole nother side on the other side of the engine. Uh, another thing is when you get to engines th these this big is you'll get each cylinder will have an individual head. So each cylinder has an individual head as well. Um, here's the intake coming back off of the intercooler, which this is, is uh, an air to li uh, liquid uh, intercooler to cool the air coming off the turbochargers, which are up here. So this high guy, because they need a, it to spin up so fast, they have six turbochargers. And uh, I've seen the, the, same, the same engine with two really big turbochargers. What this makes it do, makes it do, it makes it, do, what this does for it, is it makes it uh, the engine spool it faster, re react to uh, you know instantaneous power draw faster, as for what I'm told. And up here is the I forgot what MTU calls it, but it's a crankcase ventilator. It's basically it knocks the oil out of the uh, the, the ventilation. It's a CCV filter essentially. It's just a really large one. Um, then I can't remember if I mentioned this, these are the oil filters. Um, and you got a little tray down here. If you change the oil, why they're, uh, these filters, just after you run, these filters are full of oil. And just so you know, this whole head holds about six gallons of oil. Down here you have the battery charging DC alternator. Uh, it's, I think it's 150 amp. And I'm just trying to go, you know, do a fluid motion backwards. We got the fuel lines. This is a fuel inlet, or excuse me, that's a fuel return. This is a fuel inlet. These are going to three uh, water fuel water separators. Trade name is Raycor filters. Everybody knows them. That's in the, in the field. They're used as a primary f filter to knock the filter down. I think it goes down to like you know I think now 10 microns. Then it goes into these fuel filters that knocks it down to like one micron. So, and I think this one's missing paint because someone pulled it off to prime it. Uh, you got the fuel priming handle for when the fuel filters are empty because you don't want to fill the filters up with dirty fuel and you just, you basically you're shoving fuel, fresh fuel through the system to get the air out of it. Um, so, obviously you got the oil fill right here, um, the oil pan down there. This engine holds, I think it was about 100 gallons of oil. Down here, we got um, the, some people call these uh, explosion windows. Uh, some people call them access windows. They, pretty much all they are there for is to, uh, if you're doing an in-frame where you need to replace, you know, one piston or one liner, you don't have to pull the engine out of, the, out of here. You can do it in place. Um, obviously you got the dipstick 
and it has Earl in it. Down here, you can see one of the starters. Um, there's another one right like it on the other side. One set of starting batteries and one charger. There's a mirror image of this on the other side with the starter. Here's where all the magic happens for the controller. This uh, controller um, sends 24 volts or sends battery power to the engine computer um, or ECM. I'm trying to dumb. I, I'm trying to you know dumb it down from technical terms for the common people to understand this. It sends power to the ECM to uh, turn it on like a key on position, and then it will uh, send power to the starters and crank the start crank the engine on by itself, um, not relying on the ECM to start the engine. Um, and it controls it does its own voltage regulation so that it watches the voltage coming off of uh, the unit and it adjusts it accordingly. So anyway. Moving back, here's the alternator. It's about, I don't know, six foot long um, by about five foot in diameter. It This is, uh, so it produces 3,000 uh, kilowatts at 12,000 volts. So it needs to be a little bit on the big side. All right, so my fucking handy helper right here um, said, because it's a bigger alternator, it does obviously have uh, dual bearings on it, which the smaller alternators don't. Um, you can see down there, it has a one bearing. Normally, this right here would be butted up to the back of the engine, and the, the rear rear bearing would be supporting the front of the, of the alternator. And for who's... If you're concerned, uh, if you're confused about that term, this me calling this an alternator, that's what it is. Um, a lot of people call them gener generator ends, head, like generator heads and stuff like that. They're an alternator. They're producing alternating current. They're all the rotor is spinning, so alternating. It makes sense. I uh, hope so. But anyway, we go further back. Um, behind the store right here is the vault on this big unit. Just to be more. Uh, precise about this unit is that here's a voltage regulator that controls the excitation going into the the main alternator to increase uh, you know excitation to make more power when more power is needed. And here's the back enclosures. We had this open up earlier. Can't really see into it, but there's a lot of scary big electrical stuff with really uh, large insulators. This is a great part right here. It's obviously a chase way for um, all the wires and stuff like to come into the unit because we don't want anything exposed. And so come over to here and it's and you can see it's 3000 kW. And again, we got the battery charger over here battery charger and batteries over here another starter um, here is the ECM for the engine this was electronically controls all the the fuel system on it um, anything that has to do with the engine this controls it that controller over there all it does is it watches this guy and if it the engine gets too hot it shuts it off but this one does all the diagnostic portion follow down here here's a block heater for the engine this is uh, a uses the 9,000 watts. Yeah, if you don't believe me. Oh, excuse me, 12,000 watts. I'm used to dealing with smaller units that have two uh, block heaters. So, same thing on this side. Lots of cylinder heads. And this right here is the oil cooler for the engine. Um, now, this is where it gets kind of weird. So this engine has two water pumps on it, and no, not one is not a raw water pump for your marine application. So this big, big one down here, there's where was it at? It's water pumps down there. That one is for the uh, 
the jacket water cooling. Now, if you come up here, you see the smaller smaller pipe going into it right in here. That's for the the intercooler cooling. So that, that part back back there is being ran by that guy to cool it. There's essentially, if I remember correctly, there these guys have two different radiators in them. One for the intercooler and one for the main uh, radiator. That is for because uh, the intercooler they want running at a lower temperature than the engine block. So I don't think I missed anything. Oh, and uh, these these guys right on um, the suspension for uh, seismic uh, support. Anyway. If I miss anything, let me know. And if you want to see something else, uh, give me a holler. Bye.